Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. Sheridan, Wyoming photographer and eighth grade English teacher Tim Doolin spends his free time during the summers traveling extensively throughout the Rocky Mountain West, photographing the majesty and splendor of our rugged and diverse region. We'll see his beautiful work and meet the man behind the camera next on Wyoming Chronicle. Funding for this program is made possible in part by the Wyoming Humanities Council, helping Wyoming take a closer look at life through the humanities, thinkwhy.org, and by the members of the Wyoming PBS Foundation. Thank you for your support. And as we begin this beautiful Wyoming Chronicle, it's our pleasure to be joined by photographer and English instructor, Tim Doolin. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. You're an English teacher here in Sheridan? Eighth grade? Uh-huh. And you're also a photographer. We tease our viewers with some of your great work at the start of the show, and we're going to have a chance to, to really look at some of your beautiful pictures here in just yeah. a minute. But give us a little history of, of you, of your background, Tim. Did you, yeah. did you grow up in Wyoming, or did you find this beautiful place? Sure. I am actually a West Coast boy. I was born and raised in the West Coast. Um, graduated from high school in Tacoma, Washington. And then in 1991, my dad took a job here in Sheridan. And I was 19, and I came too. And it's just been a blessing. I, I, will, I will be buried here, probably. And I just, I love what Wyoming is and what it has to offer. How did you begin discovering what beauty Wyoming does have to offer? How mm. did that work for you? I'm an outdoor person, and that comes from shared experiences as a kid growing up. My parents always took us camping and backpacking. And so coming to Wyoming, instead of driving for hours to get to the mountains, suddenly the mountains were right there. It's almost like you could reach out and touch them. And it was just a natural fit. The very first day I was here, we drove up uh, red grade and saw foxes and moose, and I was hooked. Now, one time you wanted to be a forest ranger. I did. I, I thought I was going to spend my uh, life as a forest manager. And, uh, you know, things happen and, and choices, and, and it all worked out really well. And how long have you been teaching here in Sheridan? I have finished 26 years, um, getting ready for 27. And now into the, the goods that we'd like to talk about today. Yeah. Give us your photography history. What, what, um, when did you learn about photography, yeah. and when did you decide that, hey, this is something that I really like? Sure. Um, like a lot of kids, um, I kind of wanted to be like my dad. And my dad, on all of our family vacations, he always had a camera. Um, he documented the experiences. And then later on, we would watch those with our friends and laugh at, at the moments. And so when I was 12 years old, I had a paper out. And I used the money from that to buy a Canon AE-1 film camera. Same model my dad had. And at that point, I started taking photos as well. I quickly realized that I had an eye for it. And, and that's just a, an, a gift, I think. Were these um, like um, um, nature shots or sports yeah. shots, or what were they? Nature shots. Mm -hmm. Nature shots, that's, that's my call. Um, what I enjoy the most anyways. And unlike my dad, his images were kind of static, and here was the moment. I s could see how elements fit together in a scene. And so by accident, I took a few good photos, and then I got hungry, how did I do that? What did I do in this one versus that one in order to make this a successful image? So I just started reading. And was this in the day when you had to mail it off? Yes. Wait? Yes. 24, get them back. 36 rolls. And of here we go? It was like a Christmas present. <laughs> yeah. And some days it wasn't Christmas because you were like, oh, no. And other days you were like, oh, look at that. But you were recognizing the makeup of pictures even as a teenager. Yeah, I really was. And uh, <clears throat> um, so I just read and read and read and I got better and better and better. And in So you're self-taught? I'm much. totally self-taught. I've never taken a photography class. Um, and in 2005, I switched to digital. And 
At that point, the learning curve really just took off. Instant feedback on a little screen on the back, and then you started putting it all together. Um, and, and that's kind of really where I blossomed. You take um, your, your photography profession, I guess, I, is it, a, it is a profession, yeah. even though it's a part-time profession for you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Um, I, I, I spend a lot of hours doing this, and I want to do it well. Um, I, the, the beauty of, of nature and also the subjects that I'm photograph photographing with people, um, you want to you want to give them the justice they deserve. You you also do weddings and you do senior pictures. I do. How does that compare for you, professionally, relative to the beautiful pictures that we're about to see it yeah. um, out in the beauty of Wyoming? It's more challenging. More Anytime challenging. Anytime you deal with people. Sure. Okay. Anytime you deal with people and you can't go back, you know sometimes the most incredible landscape. You can go there in the morning, you can go there in spring, summer, winter, fall. Um, you can always go back and try to catch it again, but on a wedding, you have one shot. So I assume you have had to take senior pictures of former students. Yeah, I have. How's that work out? Oh, that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> I, I think that's probably the thing I enjoy the most about the people side of photography is getting to interact with and see my former students as they walk through their journey in life. Uh, sure. Seeing the successes and, and their, where they're planning to go is great. And I want to tell our viewers how I came to know you. Sure. And I came to know you by social media posts. Mm -hmm. At the very start of the pandemic in, in late March, mm -hmm. you started posting a picture a day, yeah. essentially, that wanted to give people respite, I think, from what we were all were mm -hmm. worried about at the time. And to a great extent are today. How did that come about? Yeah. As a teacher, I was trapped in front of the computer screen, hours on end, interacting with kids and with curriculum. And it, it was enough to make me just kind of go stir crazy and the isolation of the shutdown as well. And so I found that I was escaping by clicking on folders of images. And I started to realize that here was a momentary respite for me and here was some way that I could bring some joy and happiness and, and escape for others. And so I did, I started to post on social media and it started, I thought I'd maybe do two or three weeks. Um, and I did it by themes. Um, and then it just kind of grew and the people were asking for more and the comments were, and it, it did just, it just kind of grew into something far bigger than I expected. Thousands and thousands of views. Yeah, and so I was sharing between 30 and 50 images a day of these themes, all from the great state of Wyoming. And uh, it just, the thanks that I received afterwards, again, I was kind of shocked. Um, I didn't anticipate that, but it, it kind of brought me joy. Photography too often is a selfish endeavor. It's what I capture and what I bring and look what I created and what I did. And I don't want this to be about me. I want it to be about the beauty of our scenery and the beauty of this state and sharing that with others. Were you surprised at the reaction that you got? I really was. Um, again, I thought I'd be done after a couple weeks and I simply couldn't. We were sorry that you finished after 54 days, if yeah, I 54 recall. 54 days. Um, my wife yeah. and I enjoyed it immensely and it bought, bought great pleasure for us. I give you three places to go in Wyoming and only three. Where are you taking me? Well, you have to go to, the, to Jackson Hole. You have to go to the Tetons. Um, it's perhaps the most iconic skyline in, in the world. Um, the Snowy Range. Love the Snowies. And I think that of, may surprise some people. Yeah. With, with all of what Wyoming has to give. Totally. Um, and then, and this one's going to get you just a little bit. I would take you to the Red that Shelf, is, oh. which is north of Casper off of 33 Mile Road. Um, it's just this kind of stark and yet amazingly beautiful stretch. There's like 30 miles of red rock bluffs and cliffs. And in the springtime, you get the green and red contrast. In the fall, you get the thunderstorms that are still coming across. It's, I love that area. You're a writer. I am. Where does that creativity intersect with your work as a photographer? Oh, I teach my kids the same thing. Um, the cliche is that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, the goal is to use a thousand words to create a picture. 
And so I, I, they, they intermingle like crazy. I'll put photos on the screen of interesting animal interactions and I'll have kids write the story. What do you think was happening here? Or then I will write some words and I'll have them take a guess at, what am I describing? Did I pull it off? All right, Tim, this is gonna be my favorite part of the show. All right. And I um, I'm just I can't tell our viewers how beautiful your work is. And this is the first picture we're gonna start with. It's yeah. a picture, it's a beautiful picture of an owl. Yeah. What's the story there? Uh, that little guy, that's actually an owl chick. And he was on the grounds of the VA here in Sheridan. And I was tipped off by a friend and then given permission to actually come up to the VA and photograph him. And I found him and he was laying on a branch looking straight down at me. So are you shooting up? I'm shooting straight up. Oh my up. goodness. And I had to go through contortions to get the camera and the lens all lined up. And he just watched me the whole time. And it, I mean, it just makes me giggle every time I see the photo. This next picture looks like a weasel family picture to me. Yeah, it's a pine marten. And uh, that one was right here in the Bighorns in Cloud Peak Wilderness. And it was really cool because I had dropped my backpack and stepped away for a minute and I looked back around and that little character was going through my pack. And I had a wide angle lens on my camera so I darted over, grabbed a big lens and it stuck around long enough for me to actually be able to get that shot. Looks like he's just checking you out there. Yeah. And here of course are the Tetons. That's your classic yeah, iconic skyline. Yeah, it is beautiful. And that's Blacktail Ponds at sunrise and if you go to the Tetons, you should check out Blacktail Ponds. The colors are, are just beautiful. Um, this is a great picture, maybe taken. Is this in late fall or is this in early spring? It, it's actually, believe it or not, it's, it, it's probably in late June. Okay. And that is in Sunlight Basin. Um, and I was struck by the arms of that tree and it's a warrior even though it has long expired. You're elevated here. Yes, that's the Beartooth Highway. Okay. at sunrise and that's so cool because the fog lo rolls into the lowlands and the sun came right up above the top and oh, just epic views. I think this might be my favorite of the pictures you've shared with me. Okay. And, and it is, it's, it's one of my favorites and I can't even attribute it to the experience. It's just a cool shot of those pheasants and I was driving a county road here in Sheridan County and it was winter time and there's a farmer who plows a furrow for his goats. And he just lays straw into that that they then eat and lay on. And the pheasants had flown in and just filled. There were dozens of pheasants that had filled that um, plowed furrow and I, I just got that shot. The picture our viewers are looking at now I think can be on any Christmas card that our viewers are gonna send out yeah. this Christmas season. It's one of my favorite locations. I have photographed that barn in every season. Um, and it's literally just over the hill from where we are currently sitting. Um, and uh, I, I can't get tired of it. And that was a spring snowstorm that came in kind of late. And I went in there and got it. Is this the same barn? It is the same barn. <laughs> it's just the opposite side. And again, that was an amazing, it just epic sunrise. I should tell our viewers we're at the, the great Brinton Museum mm -hmm. um, near Bighorn, yes. here in, uh, which is near Sheridan, Wyoming. Beautiful, beautiful wildflowers. You can see this many in, in many different places in Wyoming. Where are we at here? Yeah, you, you are literally directly in line right up this canyon in the springtime. There is a bouquet of wildflowers that lasts about two weeks. And I have over the years um, photographed several. That one was in Wyoming Wildlife um, and I've had some others from the same patch of flowers that have also been in Wyoming Wildlife and that was the perfect, I had the sky, I had the flowers, I had the sun star and it just came together nicely. Do you enter your photos in a lot of, um, um, submit them to a lot of different publications or do you just do it periodically or, or what just, do you do with th just those Just periodically types of yeah. and it's more of a time issue than anything. More wildlife. Yeah. That was such a cool experience. I was actually on assignment for Wyoming Wildlife, shooting a fly fishing charity here in town, and we were on the Padlock Ranch. And the kids had actually moved ahead of me, and suddenly on the opposite side of the bank, I saw this fox. And moments later, 
one single shaft of light. Some people think that's manipulated. That is exactly how it happened. And the fox was looking into it. And again, it's just like one of those moments where you go, that was amazing. Do you recall what he has his interest? He's intent on something here. He's looking at the kids. And because I was behind, I got the, the, the view of that. It's a beautiful shot. I wonder if the kids even had any idea they were being watched there. They didn't. Beautiful wild horse. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's one of our prior mountain, which is, th they fluctuate between Montana and Wyoming, right on the border there, uh, Mustangs. And that's a funny story, because I, it was the first time I'd ever gone to the priors, and I didn't know they were so people um, friendly. So I'm sneaking through the trees. I'm literally stalking this stallion, thinking that he's gonna bolt at any moment. And I come out of the trees, and he's standing there with the wind in his face and the sun, and I get his photo. And then he actually came over a lot closer, kind of like, who are you? And I learned right then and there that wild horses are not elk or uh -huh. deer or <laughs> things like that. It looks like he has weathered some storms though, doesn't it? Yeah. Speaking of storms. Yes. Oh, I was driving back from Dubois and that's right outside of Crow Heart. And I had to pull over because the hail was just pounding my truck. Mm. And as the storm moved further to the north, it turned to rain and then that rainbow. And it's, it's really low on the horizon and I don't think I've seen a rainbow stay that low ever. And that's a, this is your learning experience because I had the exact same experience. That's midday. And the higher the oh, sun sure. is in the sky, the, the lower, lower the rainbow. The rainbow. Sure. Some more horses here and this one is just so yeah. cute. And that's a, that's a fan favorite. A lot of people love that shot, especially in Wyoming mm -hmm. with cowboy mm -hmm. country. And that colt, he was just nibbling on his mom's ear and she was eating away like he wasn't there. Comfortable with that, just, just cozy and cozy enough. I did a double take yeah. when I saw that picture for the first time because you just see the colt's head. And it's just a, a, a beautiful picture. Sunrise or sunset? That is sunrise. And to the left in that screen, you'll see there's kind of a, a, a Dolomite Butte. That's a local um, landmark. It's up near Burgess Junction and it's called Twin Buttes. And so kind of like the Red Barn, it's one of those locations I like to frequent. Just, just beautiful, just beautiful. Similar. Yeah, and there's your red uh, shelf area there north of Casper. Yeah, Casper. Um, and that was a sunset in that case. Um, and it had been rainy all day long. And then right at sunset, it all came together. Do you ever travel somewhere and get skunked, so I to do. speak? Yeah. yeah. It's just part of the game, isn't it's it? It's part of the game. Yep. And another one of my favorites, the difference between the clouds and the water here. It's a yeah. time lapse of some sort. It is. And that's in Sunlight um, Creek Canyon, which is right at the mouth of Sunlight Basin. Um, and I hiked down over the edge to get that. And the natural curve of the water, and you're right, the silkiness of, and the clouds, it, it was just really cool. And, and again, there's been no Photoshop work done to that at all. Do you recall how long your shutter was open there for this shot? I don't. Mm -hmm. One eighth of a second or longer. Sure. Um, the sun in this picture just is striking. Yeah. And that is up at the height of the Bighorns. I'm actually standing on Hunt Mountain looking towards Lovell. And it's one of the greatest perspectives in the state because you're so elevated and the relief drops away so quickly. And you can watch those thunderstorms mm. march across that country and, and you can watch them blow up. And you can actually, if you're lucky, catch a lightning strike. But that's for, your, your vision here is not 10 or 20 miles. You're looking at 90 or 100 miles, I would guess. Exactly. Um, of, of being able to see more beauty. Yeah, and those are fireweed on Bald Mountain here in the Bighorns. Um, and that clump is there every year. And it's usually right about this time of, of the year, um, late summer. Yeah. Tim, your work is just so great. I, I, oh. I, I'm almost speechless when I watch this. Thank you. Yeah, where are we at here? That's Wind River Lake. That is the headwaters of the Wind River and it's uh, west of Dubois yes. along the Togadi Pass. Um, Easily to drive to. Yes, in Just fact, drive right you it. drive literally right to the shore there. Yeah. Yeah, very easy for people to see. Mm -hmm. And is that Brooks Lake? It is Brooks Lake, uh -huh. good work. And sunrise, mm -hmm. and can't argue with that light. Boy, and, and the reflection there, just, just, just pretty. And this, this must be, I'm guessing, early summer? Yes, yes, uh -huh. probably uh, mid to late June. Okay. 
How yeah. tough was it to get this shot? That time, that one took some time. Um, believe it or not, it was actually just off the highway here in Sheridan, very near Sheridan College. And it was winter and there was a roadkill. Oh. And that is a sub or immature um, bald eagle. And I just stayed there. I was shooting through my car window and finally he came back and it, you know, I was ready and, and it, it worked, but I was in the car for several hours waiting. Would he, would, he, would he come down and leave, come down and leave, or you just, you saw him and you were just waiting? I knew they'd been feeding on the carcass, and so I set up, but they they all took off when I pulled the car over to the side of the road. Um, and then they slowly came back and that sub-adult uh, made for that photo. This is either very early in the morning or late at night. Very early in the morning. Yeah. Sage grouse strut pre-dawn through about the one hour after sunrise. And I barely crawled through the sagebrush for that shot. I could see the light on the horizon. And I was like, this could make an epic silhouette. And, <laughs> and it did. And it, it did. did. Beautiful pictures here. You talked about clouds earlier. Yeah. yeah. I call that the great cottonwood. It's one of the trees here in Sheridan County. Um, I visited it all seasons. Um, and uh, it's one of my, like the barn, one of my favorite subjects. Beautiful rainbow shot with some lightning. Yes, and that's why I love that photo. I didn't know I captured the lightning. I had hoped, but I was literally kind of in Uzi mode with the camera. I was just click, 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 click as fast as I could. Did you know that you had a double rainbow going on too at the time? I didn't. I was focused on the brightest rainbow and, and later on I was like, look at that. You scored with that one. Yeah. This little guy is yeah. wondering who you are. Yeah, and that's a, that's a swift fox pup and I saw him tottering through the sagebrush, he was all alone. And he curled up and he just watched me. Um, I don't know where his family was. I kind of wonder what his fate turned to be. Yeah. More wild horses. Yeah, that's mini me right there. Mama More. and uh, and child. Beautiful, where was this taken? That's also in the Prior Mountains. Okay. We got a little water here. Yeah. That, that's my wife's favorite photo. I can tell you that. Um, that she, with all the pictures you've taken, with all the pictures, that might surprise me. That's hers. Oh, okay. It's the scientist in her okay. and the geologist. And she okay. had seen photos other photographers had done of rocks. And she said, you have to get me some rocks. So I, I did. That's actually a, a side channel of the Snake River, very near Schwabacher's Landing in Grand Teton National mm -hmm, Park. Mm -hmm. And I saw it. I was like, okay, I got these rocks. She's going to be happy. <laughs> And here's the more mature. Yes. And you know that bald eagles, sometimes they watch and sometimes they fly. And I spotted him and I was like, there's the moon, but I was in my truck too high. So I cracked the door and I literally poured myself out of the vehicle down and slid out from underneath the door and click and he flew and I got a winner one shot. Right after that. Was this in Sheridan County? No, it's actually over by Jackson as well. Here's another Christmas card worthy shot, Yeah, Tim. And that is a cabin on the grounds of Camp Bethel, which is up in the Bighorns. Um, but it was an accidental masterpiece <laughs> because that's a long- feeling much of what you do isn't accidental, quite <laughs> frankly. I, will, I promise you, I, I did not know. As you look in the foreground of that image, there's kind of green highlights, almost Thomas Kincaid-esque. Mm -hmm. And there's a yard light on a pole, a fluorescent yard light just out ah. of the screen. And I shot that photo in 2005 when I first started digital. I did not know that a digital sensor picks up the green wavelength. And the image is just insane. But I can't tell you I planned it to be oh, that it's, way. It's, it's beautiful. I don't think you can be a Wyoming photographer without having shot buffalo. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I'll try to keep it brief, but I, I have to tell you the story behind that. Because I came as close to death as I've ever uh -oh. come in that experience. I got to Antelope Flats um, pre-dawn. The landscape is barren, not an animal to be seen. So I walked 200 yards out into the flowers and started shooting photos. And to condense this story, I suddenly became aware. I looked up over the top of the camera because my focus had been on my screen, live view. And I have buffalo coming right at me. And they're coming fast. 
and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I zipped up my pack, threw it over my shoulder, grabbed my camera, and at that point, I had a wall of buffalo, all these cows, coming at me, and they're about 60 yards away, and they are trucking. Mm -hmm. And they got to about 50 yards, and I, ha! And they wheeled off, and while they're doing that, I'm backing up as quick as I can towards the car. And they form up this wall and they come at me and this time it's 40 yards, ha, and they wheel off. And I do that multiple times until they're about 20 yards from me. I can see the whites of their eyes and I can hear them breathing. And so I'm thinking, I'm gonna run through the grass and I'm gonna jump up on the top of my car. I, I, I don't have time to open the door. And as that happened, you can't make this up. Part of the formation of Buffalo broke and a group went over and surrounded my car. Now I have nowhere to go. So I'm ha in at these buffalo. Make, they're veering off, forming up this wall, coming at me, ha! And suddenly, at this point, I'm probably 40 yards from my car. Suddenly, the buffalo around my car moved to the opposite side. So when this group of buffalo broke away that time, I just turned and ran. And I, threw, I left my camera, my backpack outside, I whipped the door open, dove through, and that photo, I actually reached back outside, grabbed my camera, and shot that through the window of my car. Wow. And you can actually see they're still locked onto me oh, sure. at that point. I don't know what happened. I don't know if a grizz went through the area and riled them up. Um, but later on, I looked back at the sequence of images, and there's no buffalo. And then there's tiny little black dots on the horizon. And then those dots get bigger, 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 until I realized what was happening. Mm. Now, I would have thought you would have been in more danger here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big lens. Big okay. Lens. Okay. Yeah. Not as close. Not as close. Not even, in fact, much, much safer distance. Sure, sure. I mean, he's just scratching his neck. Yeah, and like. I love the leaf on his foot. For me, that's yeah, the best what part that of the was. image. Okay, sure. Yeah. And best wishes with dealing with what still is an uncertain time in your vocation of being a teacher. Yeah, thank you. Well, Tim, it's been a pleasure for you sharing with us these beautiful pictures and, and the stories be, behind them. We really appreciate your time today on Wyoming Chronicle. Thank you as well, and you are welcome. Thank you. Funding for this program is made possible in part by the Wyoming Humanities Council, helping Wyoming take a closer look at life through the humanities, thinkwhy.org, and by the members of the Wyoming PBS Foundation. Thank you for your support.